everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to be doing our Fantasy Fairy Flower House and Mushrooms. However, this is part two, so not the flower house. <laughs> we're going to be focusing in on the pointy mushroom and the smaller mushrooms. And so right here, I'm starting with a ball of about one and a quarter inches in diameter. So this is mud clay one more time, and I'm going to stay, take this mud clay and I'm going to start creating this really long teardrop. And you can tell right here, it's about five inches long. That's pretty long. And then I'm going to start flattening it against the surface of my tile. Now, when I do this, I kind of form it up with my hands the way I like it. I'm going to push on the bottom eventually. I'm going to give a nice little indent. So it looks like it's got a nice little, you know, like it could go over a little mound area somewhere. And then I'm just using my blade here to kind of bring in that stem that I'm developing right here along with, you know, just using my fingers to kind of smooth that clay. Once I get that stem all nice and smoothed out, sometimes I'll even kind of indent on the side. Maybe I'll make this curve a little bit. It's truly up to you. But once you have that together, and I sometimes use my acrylic roller to roll over it a little bit, that helps too. But once I have this all smoothed out, I'm then going to take another piece of my mud clay. I'm going to roll this out on a number four setting, and then I'm just going to cut slices of this, and we're going to place this over the stem of this well, what's going to be eventually our pointy mushroom. Now that particular piece of clay was actually, it was close to about a half of an inch on width, okay? And probably about an inch or two, you know, in length. And then again, I'm just cutting more and more strips and I'm gonna place them horizontally onto the mushroom stem. Now, once I have that done, I'm gonna also start cr cutting more and more strips and I'm gonna run those vertically. So I'm going both ways on this. I'm gonna have both horizontal and vertical lines running. Now, when I was putting this particular, I wanna say mushroom together, I had a little bit of a steampunk vibe <laughs> going on. And you're gonna see that a little bit as I place these strips down. I do a little bit of a stitch area. I do add in a little buckle on this particular mushroom and just really enjoyed creating that part of it. So from here, really, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna let you guys just watch my hands talk as I create more and more of my pointy mushroom.
Okay, so I just needed to chime in here really quickly. This is some more of my mud clay. It's about an inch to an inch and a half in, well, actually inch and a quarter in diameter. And I'm creating that teardrop form again, and then I'm flattening it out like you can see here. I'm also kind of pulling it with my hands a little bit, but this is to make the cap on our mushroom. And notice here, I'm giving it kind of a pointy look. To me, I almost, <laughs> I'm sorry, it makes me think of Gandalf's hat in Lord of the Rings <laughs> and, and or like a gnome. You know, gnomes have those little pointy hats too. Anyway, that's kind of what we're doing here with our mushroom and that's what the mushroom cap is going to look like. I also like to flare up the bottom of the mushroom area just a little bit because I like to try and give an idea of, you know, there's some detail underneath here that you can enjoy and I do use that to my advantage. Anyway, I'm also bringing in some more of that flattened mud clay. This was rolled up again on that number four setting on my Atlas Pasta machine. And I'm gonna cut a couple of strips here. And once I cut, have these cut, I'm gonna bring them over to the cap on our mushroom and I'm gonna lay them horizontally on there. I, I love this look and it, it <laughs> I'm sorry. It just looks more and more like Gandalf's hat to me. <laughs> My, my, my movies are just coming out of me. What can I say? <laughs> anyway, I've got that band on there. What, you know, it's there, you know. Uh, I'm going to cut a couple more, and then I'm going to add more details to the top part of our mushroom. Once I've gotten this mushroom completely sculpted, though, I'll go ahead then and place it in the oven at about 275 degrees for about, oh, 15 to 20 minutes. So once more, I'll let you guys resume watching my hands talk <laughs> as I complete up my pointy mushroom. <laughs>
All right, so at this point, the mushroom has been completely baked. And as you can see at the very end there, I inserted wires. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove those because we need to go ahead and paint this entire thing in black sequin paint. So, or I should say your sequin black. I, I wanted to go to my black matte, but I thought, no, I, I want to have a little bit of a glossy finish on this because if there is some black that does show through, I want it to be kind of yeah, a little flashy. <laughs> A little fun, if you will. So that's what I decided to do here. I'm painting the entire thing in my black. Now, after I got that done, I decided to start off with my aqua flash here. That and my shimmering silver. I wanted to start with those particular paints first. And as you can tell here, with the base color of the cap of this mushroom being that aqua flash. I just love that aqua flash. I thought it was fantastic. And then I took the shimmering silver and started painting the little, um, I want to say the ribbon part on the top of that cap in the silver. Once I got the part of the cap kind of really just going here with the silver and that aqua flash, I decided to bring it down into the stem as well. So that silver went down onto the side areas on the stem of our mushroom. And then I just started bringing in all the other colors, everything from my green flash, my rose gold, my golden touch, I mean, all my different colors. So from right here, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna again, let you guys watch my hands talk, or I should say my paintbrush talk, <laughs> as I complete up painting this particular mushroom. <laughs>
All right, so I wanted to go ahead and chime in here once more. And as you notice there, I started placing in some of my rhinestones, my pointed back rhinestones. And then I'm coming in with my Posca and I'm adding in details. And this is the part I love the most. Just like I did with the flower part on the first part of this, you know, this two-part series <laughs> on our, our fairy mushroom kind of thing. Um, the thing was, I had to bring in my Posca pen, and this acrylic, you know, paint marker is wonderful. It does all the extra parts I really needed to do in bringing in detail. Now, once in a while, I mess up, and I have to admit, when I get to this point, I'm scared. I'm scared to go ahead and use that Posca because I don't want to mess up. Well, guess what? Bring in a little bit of a Q-tip and use a little bit of water and you can erase whatever mistake you make. No problem right away and it's gone. And then just keep moving on with it. So if you're afraid about, you know, making a mistake, oh no, I made that line wrong. Bring in a Q-tip with a little bit of water. It'll erase right off of your metallic paint that you've already laid down. And then you can go ahead and just finish this up completely. Now, if you guys were wondering, yes, that was a little bit of thunder going by. <laughs> we're getting a little bit of rain here, so I'm definitely enjoying this. <laughs> Once again, I'm bringing in some of my mud clay and I'm going to create some little mini mushrooms this time. And this time I decided to make them, these were a lot smaller, and I gave them, you might say, more of a circular kind of cap on the top. I didn't do a whole lot of extra detail on them. I did use my needle tool quite a bit. I just thought, let's go ahead and make these just more lines and dots for the most part and just see what comes about. So from here, I'll go ahead again and I'll let you guys watch my hands talk as I create up these little mini mushrooms.
Okay, so now that I've gotten all of my mini mushrooms all baked up, I'm going to bring in my blue flash and my green flash here, and I'm also going to bring in my rose gold, and I'll go ahead and paint up this particular single mushroom. But before I do the rose gold, I'm going to go ahead and on this particular mushroom, I'll do the blue flash, the green flash first, let that dry. I'll move on to the second set, or I should say the paired mushroom set and I'll paint up the base of this thing in my nice green flash. Once I have that, I decided to bring in my garnet red. Now, part of me wanted to go back to my sparkling fuchsia, and I love that color. And part of me still is like not thrilled. I am not a big orangey red guy. <laughs> I prefer my reds to be a little bit more on the bluish, <laughs> the bluish side of the scale. And so for me to go ahead and paint this in that garnet red, yeah, it was a little bit of a, oh, do I have to? <laughs> but it's a good thing to try and stretch your palette if you can. You know, we, we all have our preferences in our colors. Some people do like their oranges and they like their more rust browns and that sort of thing. And they don't tend to go towards jewel tones. So if you can, if you can push your limits just a little bit here and there, when it comes to your color choice, it's a good thing to do because if you work within a certain color palette and that's all you ever do, you might be missing out on possible you know, color choices that might be better for the subject matter than what you're actually working with. So you know, take that leap. I know it's a little bit hard, <laughs> even for me, you know, going to that, like I said, that more orangish red, it's really hard to do. But in the end, when you are finished painting the piece that you're working on, you'll be able to look back on it and say, wait a minute, that particular color choice was much better than what I had originally planned. So keep that in mind when you go ahead and you are painting some of this stuff, because I know for some of you, you'll be like, well, I don't like her color choices. Pick your own, but once in a while, take a chance on maybe a color you might not like as much. You might find that you will enjoy that so much more. So once again, I'm bringing in that white Posca marker and you know, I can't help it. This gives me details I just can't get otherwise. I mean, yes, if I really wanted to, I guess I could create even a stack and do a little, a pure clay thing, you know, where I could do some checker right across there. But you know, I, you know, I like playing with these um, paint markers. They're so much fun, you know? <laughs> you don't have to necessarily pull out a cane or create a cane, you could just go ahead and throw on that paint and it's just wonderful. Now again, I want to mention when you mess up when it comes to Posca markers and it has happened to me many a time. You know, if you need to sit down with a piece of paper, maybe some black paper, since I've got my white here and mess with it a little bit on some black paper. Um, but use a Q-tip that has been dampened with some water and it'll come right off. It'll come right off of the, your original paint there and you can start all over again. So don't feel like you're just at it, you know, like, oh, I've got to get this perfect the first time. No, <laughs> don't do that to yourself. Please don't, you know, don't put that pressure on, you know, just relax, you know, get into that Zen mode if you have to. <laughs> I mean, I love Zen mode. What can I say? <laughs> But get into that Zen and it will just flow a whole lot easier. <laughs>
All right, so we're going to do something a little different with our mushrooms, and I'm going to bring back in my uh, fairy flower from last time because we're going to work on that piece first. And I had gone back and forth and back and forth. I was thinking about a picture piece. I was thinking about other ways in which I could use them. And then I got a, into a little conversation with a good friend of mine, Miss Jan, and she said, why don't you do this? And I was like, oh, well, that's not a bad idea. That's kind of cool. And I had, I was saving it, that particular idea, and I'm not even telling you right now, <laughs> what, um, for another time. But I decided, no, this is perfect. This will work great. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing in some black clay here, okay? That was your liquid translucent Sculpey, right? And I'm putting a little bit of super glue on the back of this. And this black was rolled out on a number one setting on my Atlas Pasta machine. And mind you, it's not covering the entire backside, okay? But I'm trying to get it to um, kind of stay down, okay? And then I'm going to trace it with my needle tool. Now, once I get this thing traced out, I'm going to try to lift it up with my blade. So I'm going to try and get my blade underneath it. Now, this clay was super soft, okay? It was like probably way too soft <laughs> on, on the part of almost going to goo. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyways, I did attempt and I did get it up with my blade eventually, but it did warp a little bit. However, that being said, I still had areas that were not covered with my black, right? So I'm piecemealing it in here and I'm gonna use my burnisher and my fingers a little bit just to conform it to the back, right? Once I do, and like I said, this clay was super soft. Once I got it in and, you know, this super glue really does come in handy here because, you know, once it attaches into that clay, it's not going anywhere, okay? Unlike the liquid Sculpey where it just wants to shift around like crazy, which drives me nuts. <laughs> that, you know, it, it does, it drives me nuts. But that, you know, that super glue will keep it in place. And then once I had it in place, I used the burnisher, burnish it down a little bit. And then I also kind of rip this away from the backing. So this way then I, I can still rip it away. And just like right there, I'll place another piece in. I'll even use my scissor, scissors and eventually I'll flip this thing back over and I'll cut it up really nice and neat. And then I'll bake this thing oh, for about uh, 15 minutes, 15 or 20 minutes again. Now, once I have that done though, on this particular flower, I'll go back to my other pointy mushroom and my mini mushrooms and I'll back them also in the black and also place them in the oven to bake. Okay, so at this point, all of the, the flower and the mushrooms, they've all been backed with black. Now, I did not bake this piece right away. Instead, I left it fresh. And the reason was is because we're bringing in a Bic um, pen. I took out the inkwell, okay? Took out the inkwell with my needle nose plier. And then I placed it down on the back side of this flower. I'm taking my X-Acto knife and I'm just trimming it up where I can. I'll bring in my burnisher and burnish this down to the clay that I already have on the flower. Once I have that done, I'll bake this whole thing for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, when I get that done, the nice thing was, and I wasn't sure if it would work, but it did, it worked great. This is actually going to be my little plant stick. We're gonna put this into another plant. So 
you know, the nice thing about having this little fairy flower house <laughs> is that, oh, it's going into a plant anyways. It's total, yeah, it's, it's such a fun thing. <laughs> now, mind you, I'm using a big pen here, and yes, this thing will bake just fine. This particular type of pen will bake just fine. So look for these kinds. It's the big, I, I wanna say, um, it's got that off color, almost like milky kind of gray look, uh, round stick. Look for the round sticks. These will work just fine. Don't use a Paper Mate or any other brand. Those will probably warp. This one I know works just fine in the oven. Now, with that said, these two on the mushrooms, I had already baked the backing, okay? I did not have it, you know, so this was a solid black backing on the back side. So I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna be using fresh clay on baked clay. So I'll bring in my, uh, my liquid Sculpey and I'll bring in my super glue and together I'll place them down on there so that the, this fresh clay will adhere in to our mushroom pieces. So I'm going to address something that I know I'm gonna get probably questions on, maybe not, we'll see, but why did I not use a possible metal stake instead of the big pen? Okay, so <laughs> funny thing this, um, I've been decluttering like a mad fubo lately and in doing so, I got rid of a lot of stuff. And I really didn't want to go out to the stores and, oh gosh, have to go look for these metal pieces. No, and you can, you can. You could go to Home Depot or whatever, go check in their, I'm sure their plants area or whatever. I'm sure they've got stakes and stuff. Hopefully something small enough that would work. Um, but I was looking for something that I would have on hand, something I could readily just use. And this worked. It worked great. <laughs> I was so ecstatic. And the other thing that I figured out later on too, after I got these pen things into my, as my planter sticks was that they're hollow, they're hollow tubes, right? So let's say for instance, you do have a metal stake, like a tiny metal stake, or even, you know, I was even thinking I could use like a, a, a knitting needle. Now I know the knitters out there would be like, Laura, how could you destroy <laughs> I can see it coming, <laughs> but you know, that's the only thing I could think of, you know, however, that said, it's a small plastic tube. You could stick that down onto a metal stake and still put it in your yard. And this plastic piece will stay in there. So you, you know, it could adjust into whatever, you know, um, that's kind of one reason why I like it. It's a hollow, hollow tube. It's plastic. It's not going to hurt the ground or anything. It's not going to disintegrate like metal either because metal will rust over time. Whereas this, and mind you, probably some metals don't when they're in the dirt, but you know, as far as I know, I think they all do. <laughs> um, but with plastic, it's not quite so much that, that way. And it's completely covered. So it's not going to be you know, exposed to sunlight that much. There you go. Anyway, so that's why I use the pen. So if you have any questions on that or, you know, please ask anyways, throw it in the comments and let me know. One more thing, I'm bringing in the pen caps to the pens. Yes, I used up the entire parts of my pens and how? I used the pen cap as my stake. And for the smaller mushrooms, this works fantastic. So keep that in mind. You don't have to use, you know, you can use the entire pen and then you're like, okay, what do I do with the pen caps? Well, guess what? It works with that as well. Yay! <laughs> and then just cover it over with your black and there you go. Now, here's the nice thing about the pen caps. I had two of them left, right? Well, I could take one, get that black all the way around it, make sure you trim it all up, and then take the other pen cap and after you baked it, stick that other pen cap up into the other one and it's a little bit a longer of a, a piece to put into the ground. So, ha, huh. <laughs> who knew, right? <laughs> hmm. Okay, so this is the end result of creating my mushrooms and my fairy flower and turning them into your potted plant features. 
Use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest of hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.